break? Okay. Because that would yep. have been funny. They, oh, yeah, they don't, they don't, okay, Fnatic. The they're getting in position. We have a tree throw on DJ. We have nothing on General Yutz yet. They just she want to make sure Palos can get away. Oh, oh there you go, Palos. He did not get the rune, though. Tim's was faster, but Tim's will die for this. Nice so, you know, first blood given to the Enchantress. Not that bad, all things considered for Fnatic. Palos could not click fast enough, though, unfortunately. Unlucky. Lack, uh, it's lack. still pretty good. I think Palos is going to get some calls from the FBI being some undercover agent. So it's a pretty nice first blood set up here. I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Palos uh, making out here alive, you know, the the, the hardest part of this uh, crazy play. Let's look at some of the uh, uh, the lanes here. You know, you talked about Batrider being a little bit more answered this game. In the lane, can they have anything this lane? Or is the Batrider just going to be useless here? Against PL and Chantres, uh, doesn't seem like an easy lane. I actually think that P uh, the bad herder should be okay, so they're gonna put the winter bottom. I think the tiny is just like one of the best cards. Mr. Tim's got caught out top again. Maybe he wanted to go for some wave pulling thing. Probably got caught yes. out by a lot of right clicks, slows. It was just yeah, meld just into down. right clicks, and it was easy. Yeah, I see. That meld is just a, a pretty damn strong spell early on. Uh, I think to go back to the bad rider. I think. He's gonna be okay. It's gonna have a lot to do with how the early waves go, but I think Tiny is just one of the best heroes at getting you through it. And our PL is not really the type of hero that threatens you too much in terms of killing. He's gonna farm. You should be looking to farm, and it, it just becomes like a trade farm battle until you both get like level five, six, and then that oh. actually starts getting stronger in the lane. Oh, okay. Then and then that gives an uh, option for DJ to also rotate, I, I presume, right? As Tiny likes to do. And... Oh, definitely. They could even look. They can look for kills in this lane. You don't but have I think most side. importantly, Tiny might look for one play into mid. And I think when the game speeds up the most is when Armel is gonna get his travels. That's how the Caudal likes to play his lineup, right? He, he doesn't want these razors and vipers in the off lane. He would rather have like either the hero second that stun, or I mean, ours. I guess Bad Rider falls in the category, right? He can run in lasso, slow people. So I think this boost of travel timing is going to be very crucial for them in this game. Okay, we'll see how that works out. Tiny definitely fulfills that role, right? Of running in for and sure. stunning, so Absolutely. he can use the coddle. Uh, how cancelled do you think the Tiny's going to be when he gets his blink dagger by the Venomancer? Like you mentioned Venom versus Bat, but do you think Tiny's going to be able to play freely? Or is he also going to have to... No, uh, I, I think they're, they're going to struggle. They're going to need to help each other that at least one of them can start the fight for the other to make okay. it then easier on, later on for the other hero. As we see, they're starting a fight here onto Skem. Three stacks of Napalm, and Jab just goes for this. He was used to playing the punch, and now he's not quite as tanky, but he still deals as much damage. So he's gonna kill Skem, and Jab says, Jackie, you wanna fight me? Yeah, Jackie thinks twice about that. Yeah, nice. Pretty nice play by them, actually, here. They're both just level two. There's a tree grab level one, I think, that people have started doing. I don't know if, it, if people did it already at the Riot Masters. I think maybe Jinq made it popular there. Or at the major, but this tree, the tree grab level one is, is really strong, especially when you consider that Bad Rider Radiant is just quite a dog shit hero level one, really. So when you have this tiny who's like really being this tanky boss next to you, maybe you know, squeezing in some denies, helping you to get some last hits. Like, even if the tiny gets the last hit, all you care about on bad early on is the XP, which is what they're getting. So I think Fnatic right now, they should be pretty happy with how this lane is uh, progressing. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen this. I, th I did see it, I think, once or twice on Riyadh, but uh, I've also been very impressed with the Tiny's because it gives you actual laning, right, in the first levels as opposed to just have a toss and hope that you can kill someone. Yeah, exactly. It gives you, like, a new option, and I think this is. Yeah. Dota is definitely evolving where people they start buying items and they start playing heroes in ways where you're not just locked into one way of playing the game. Like, your Tiny is not just your derp derp, I go pull a wave, I go gank mid. You know, like this way he can act. He slaps some pulse fives real bad. Like, this Winter Wyvern, bro, you have 49 yeah. damage. Damage. This tiny is literally hitting you with a double damage rule, level one. That's uh, Jabs uh, committing suicide purposefully, of course, to get back home in time. So don't worry about this. But now DJ has been left alone, so maybe Evum could look to fun. No, they have nothing there. Uh, let's talk about the mid lane matchup as well. Is Kunkka one of the heroes that can deal with Coddle mid and is fun, fun laning his stage? Oh, we see it right here with an X arrow. Well, it does work that way, right? That's a way to punish him. They splinter blast. They need a little more damage from Tidebringer, but that splash didn't actually get to our mill. That's Yopak into the Illuminate. Oh, not Illuminate enough. They have a toss back from DJ, however. Send him back to our mill, who goes near the tower. Skim has a splinter blast, but no targets to blast nearby. Illuminate will hit him head on, and Scam will just die here to the auto attack from Jonuel, as Tims also misses the arrow. And Fnatic leaves that time to punish him. I love the 3-on-3 three three mid meta that these guys have going on. I think it's becoming <laughs> more and more normal where maybe not this early, you know, like four minutes you have 
everyone in the whole family is in the mid lane battling it out. But around like minute 5, 5.30, like minute 6, he's becoming more and more popular, right? To move your heroes oh. here, come and contest the rune. Uh, to go back to the point about Kanka, I think it's not a hero we've seen that often versus Kado, but mm. just from thinking about it, it should make a lot of sense. If you do catch him with X, he is likely dead, right? That's what Kado struggles against. If he does ever get caught, He's in a bit of trouble. He's yes. very high, so, uh, very high movement speed, so it's not easy as mid lane. Armel is. Armel. <laughs> yeah, it's body left, by the way. Here. Nice job. The next marks a spot in time. No. And Armel no, actually... is uh, easing right now a little bit. Yes. Both games, he's done a great, fantastic job. Uh, jabs can rest easy now. Uh, I've Absolutely. seen the Kunkka as an answer to Kato in EU, by the way. That's where I first saw it. No one was mm -hmm, doing it a fair mm -hmm. amount. And yes. it did seem pretty fair with the, you know, you heal with X and TP, yes. and you like yeah. deep push lane. I feel like it, it should be pretty good, but I think maybe, oh, follow oh, no. lane. He, he melted in front of an arrow, and FPZ's like, nah, mate, refraction is nothing to me. However, FPZ is a Venom answer, he's kind of slow, but luckily he deaggers the tower and he's going to be fine. Bottom lane is going to fight happening. happening bottom. Yeah, Jackie, he has five stacks of Napalm, now an extra stack from Jabs as he used the spell a bit too early. There's the Flame Break on top of that, Illuminate's ready for him, and he can't doppelganger this one away, so Armel will get you another kill. Peace mode, Armel. Yeah, he, this is, uh, as we touched a bit earlier, the Cobble Travels timing is a little bit scary, and then when he ends up getting not only free for mid, but kills, and it amplifies his timing by, like, let's say 30 seconds, one minute, you're gonna get a kill like this as they are, so I think... Both teams actually for now playing very well, the way they're rotating the heroes, I like it, it's so far a very fast paced game, boom in the top lane too, right, they get the kill on Palos, they get a bit of tower damage on the top lane, which is definitely what they need, they need a right. FPZ to counteract this early pressure a little bit, you know, maybe try going? to apply as much top as he can, maybe rotate oh, some heroes no. around, because already... Armel is back, and he's back again, this time in the top lane, making yeah. sure FPZ gets hit by the blast. Saving that uh, blinding light till the end. I think this is a really beautiful rotation, what they did. Not just to bring the Coddle top, but to put the TA into the mid lane. This is something that you see Team Spirit do a lot, or LGD. When the carry has a hard time, I mean, they will either fall back to the jungle, but usually the best thing you can do, if you have a mid that can rotate, is to put the mid laner out of his lane and put the carry there. Because it's just very easy, right? The mid laners right. will always push in the lane, so they have a little smoke. Yeah, we're doing Yopa, he's hoping to use this arrow combo. To finish off DJ, however, Tiny is a little bit too tanky. They commit to this, Latoro plus Ghost Ship, trying to maximize that stun time. DJ will tank a lot of damage, though. Finally finished off that Tidebringer. Luckily, no armor, so that was the only way they could kill him. But Palos has joined in, and they're trying to sandwich the enemy team, flanking them with John Royal as well. They have a uh, war stomp here on the three. And the Xbox spot stuff follows. There's the arrow that's gonna hit him, and Paulus could not be in trouble. Venom scale hits him, and that is gonna be enough damage to finish him off as John Hall's forced to TP home. So, boom! They read the fight better, they rotate the Venom answer, and then getting an extra kill because of it. Yeah, well, well done by them to just like connect the right, the right heroes, right? You have the Kunkka with the Marana, that's why they play these heroes together. X mark arrow, lots of damage. Nice try by DJ to toss away the Kunkka, but he finds the right angle on the splash. And I think if you're Fnatic, if you want to answer these plays, you need to do something similar to what Fnatic is doing, which is where you pair your strong heroes together that want to play together right now, which is the Tiny and the Caudal, right? That's what we saw in the top lane even. DJ, keep his top to set up Armel to come there with the travels when they uh, got the kill earlier, as we have another go on mid with the X-Mark. Yeah, and they find Palos. The arrow once again hits the target, and that's a dead TA. DJ, uh, I don't know what your plan is here. Seemed to want to toss back, realized that was not the best of plays, so DJ just runs away. As Fnatic, they all congregate mid, but to achieve nothing. Man, am, I, am, I, am I cursing these players? I'm saying, oh yeah, him going mid is so great, now he dies twice. I think he needs to play a little more conservative, like how Kunkka's gonna play the mid lane, right? He's gonna run up, he's gonna splash the wave, and then when the wave comes to your tower, then you can try to go for the creeps, but boom, execute the combo beautifully, right? You have the X mark torrent, torrent breaks all of the refraction charges, in comes the arrow, in comes the bolt, and TA is just gonna get slapped. And he's gonna die every time right now, where they catch him with this combo. So he needs to just, he needs to be very careful when these heroes are not showing on the map. Boom shows up once again, the top lane, this time Armel has the one point sword bind, could punish Tim's here if they just have a little more help. They get rid of the ward for now, but Tim's still has the leap charges, scam as well with the Arctic Burn, they'll all run away. Fnatic, not really sure what they want to do with their time. Like, Palos just wants to find a safe space to farm. Yeah, I think if you're Fnatic, I, I wonder if they would want to defend the top tower. It looks like that 
Judging from their movement, they will not. I mean, Boom, at this point, Boom is very well set up, right? They have a couple of heroes here. Sure. You have the, the Venom Ward, so it's becoming pretty hard. They're going to look to credit for some mid tower damage, maybe an active rune. I think what Fnatic should be looking to do at this point is I think the sign, you know, should not be looking for too many creeps or mid lane. Well, Jonathan just blocked the arrow, but it was too late. And now the ghost ship hits the old man, and Armel is born down here. Uh, I don't know, man. This combo seems unstoppable, and they're not. Uh, Yopaj is definitely having a very nice. I, I wouldn't call it comeback, but I know he he was not very phased by maybe the early game or getting killed mm. by the Kado. Uh, they're doing very well right now. I mean, it's something that they're very known for, right? The Kunka, Marana, like lots of stuns, rotations, lining yep. up all the spells properly, and you can tell why. No, yeah, it's it's working great. And now, if you're fanatic, how do you stem off the bleeding? Like, what, what's the play here to make sure you don't keep dying to this combo? You can force your own plays. I think ideally you have the Eng body in a very aggressive position where it's kind okay. of him who has to take the play as Boom, Moonlight Shadow. They're gonna look to Radiant's set up something. They find, yeah, they see DJ first. Tim's like, alright guys, DJ's here. Check. The mid lane is where the target is. And it's once again, Palos. Palos, you seem palost. Where are you going, buddy? Slow forever. Poison on poison on poison. And Palos is dead. But the counter initiation Radiant's might still bear them some fruit as they go for FPZ, miss the Illuminate, and that means FPZ will live for sure. Now find Skem, who does get the Winter's Curse off, but does still get hit by the Illuminate. Jabs might not need to use the lasso here, just auto attacks will do the trick. But it's still a carry for a support, not the ideal trait for a fanatic. I feel like we've seen this before. Fact Rider runs in, gets cursed. <laughs> it's like the story of the last game. Yeah. Uh, I would like to point out what Boom did there. Well, it was very beautiful you have the marana bottom he's in moonlight he like gives all the information and then mid the way they got this kill on the ta again is actually a masterclass of how you can get a kill freely without putting yourself in too much danger x mark torrent full range venomancer gale full range arrow as top we have fpz maybe a little too far up here yes he is uh, not full range this time and they're up close and personal capable of finishing him off thanks for trying looks like he he did get to finish the vessel before he died. Yeah, he has it on his barrier. Um, so okay. both teams are getting closer to a lot of timings. You have PL, he's starting to get his Diffusal Blade finished. Uh, Yopa is trying to work on a BKB. He's getting poked a bit bottom, but he should be okay here. I think unless he oversteps too hard. Um, you have oh, mid lane. Too many goals. Actually, throw out the bubble. Oh, no, Skem, he's done. He's done. No chance. Yeah, you have a chance. You, you have a chance to talk about the game. Skem died. Here we go. So we have Vessel on both teams. So both the Veno, is, he wants to play aggressive. Kala wants to play aggressive. Jabs finish his piece of travel. Tiny, he kind of has what he needs. We've seen Jin Q do this a lot with like the face boots. Like, maybe it's too hard for you to get your blink, so you get something like in between that makes you a little more tanky, but also ups your move speed. So I like this phase boost quite a lot, especially against the Venomancer Wars and all these slows to maneuver through. But we're actually going to see a lot of fights around this map, and I think for Fnatic, it's important that they either body for the TA or that they create chaos. Either way, the purpose of these two things is to make sure that this guy gets to hit creeps, because we need the TA to scale right now. Exactly, and Boom does not want her to scale, which is why they're smoking directly into her face. A scan attacks them though, and Palos is capable of making it out of here with a TP. Nice job. Well done. And now this this gank fails, and that's a smoke and in Moonlight Shadow. Expended. Oh, in fact, Fnatic wants to double punish. They want to go for their own smoke. Uh, this one is a little bit rougher, but let's see if they can. They have a world oh, TA trap. They now are flanking Fnatic. Fnatic is coming at them head on. They definitely hit the Kunkka with the Spirit Vessel. They have enough damage to kill him off. Certainly, Yopash, wow! That was no chance for him. X marks the spot, won't do anything as Armel gets out of here a lot. Yeah, this, the Caudal Vessel plus the increased magic damage from the Solar Bind is... It, it's, it's just too much for heroes to handle. Like, even in this early game, if you have like a Hood or a Cloak, if this dude gets to run at you for more than like five seconds, you will die. Also, something yeah, yeah. I'd like to mention is that Jabs went for the boost of travel build, as we have double travels on top right now. Yes, the Traveler's coming in, hoping to pick off Jackie's kill. Lasso, at the same time as the arrow hits, so Jackie won't be pushed back too far, but the Vessel should finish him off with one last Illuminate. Armel get another kill. In the mid lane, though, the fight continues, and FPZ is the one who's just got finished off, thanks to Janwell's help with the whirlwind. But now, he might pay for it. No, he just died. Yopaj is done. Okay, game's taking up a lot of pace. Armel is definitely, you know, setting setting his team up for success right now with how fast he's playing. Uh, what I wanted to talk about earlier is that 
We have Boots of Travel on two of the heroes, which obviously makes them very mobile, but they also have an inch in their lineup, so they always have a neutral creep that they can TP to. Like, Jabs right now has the freedom to keep playing very freely up top, farm the top jungle. And for instance, when they went on the Kunkka bottom earlier, he always had the option to join them. But he saw that, okay, I don't need to. I can keep farming, keep scaling. And because he didn't leave the top area, that then half a minute later actually set up the Coddle to attack. then come to him. And then they got the kill on the PL. I think the way that they're maneuvering around the map and using the heroes is very beautiful. Well, that's very clever. So it allows you to play like a, like a Spectre or Dawnbreaker usually would when it comes to Mr. Bottom, right? Boom, like, they want to really force this mid tower. It looks like Fnatic will hand it to them As, for now. Uh, they hit the tower here from the side. It's going to boom esports, which just tries to take an uh, easy objective. Dyer's Fnatic can't really overcommit here because the X plus the Torrent combo. Oh, actually, the Torrent hits and the X does two, which means they can set up for arrow, but instead of going to go that's our Mel dead. Here. Well done, using the torrent actually for vision. The it's not hitting bolt combo in his face. He's gonna keep invading, they're gonna run around. So Boom definitely picking up some pace here. Also now with the Moonlight Shadow, just gonna take over around the map. This target's gonna be TJ. Trying to get more. They're gonna catch the TJ with the X mark. gonna hit by the arrow, arrow once again. Of course, gonna hit. They will never miss the combo. Will it be enough damage? Also available. TJ, trying to run away, but unfortunately there's too many here surrounding him. So he's gonna get killed too. As it looks like maybe Avo has peaced out from the Dyer's cast right now. <laughs> but that's okay. Play by play, Monster Me will take over. Don't worry, guys. We have Yopage, he's gonna have his BKB completed now. Both teams, once again, we have a lot of timings shaping up for the teams. Alo's gonna have to be careful. So now we are around like the 16, 17, 18 minute mark where people start getting their items. Roshan is gonna be one of the next things for sure here on the menu, right? You have your Dragonlance Desolator TA. He's gonna try to look to take over the area. Bad Rider also very strong here around the pit. Same with Venomancer. So I think right now, as we have Radiant another go Oscar. on. Never mind, we don't. Just just debating the observer a little bit. Hop lane, scan, hits, but everyone is already getting out. Game is slowing down a bit because even though people are hitting their timings, we have Armel, the Cardo, who's very close to his BKB. We have Jabs, who isn't as close, but they're stacking up for him right now. So I think even though Fnatic have the chance to potentially go for a Roche kill here with the Deso, what they're doing right now, I think is very good. Uh, Boom can't really force too many issues right now, right there. The tower damage is somewhat mediocre. The Roshan taking isn't really there at all. It, it, it will take forever. So in the meantime, what they're going to do, even though they're strong right now, they're going to work towards the next time. Maybe a double BKB, see if uh, Palos can get closer to his, because the Booms lineup, they don't really have much going against BKBs, especially when the BKBs are on high duration, right? The way Boom want to play team fights, as we stated earlier in the game, are very long duration fights, lots of Venom Wards, Torrent, X Marks, Spirit Lances, as we have a smoke on smoke for now. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Let's see who runs into who first. Looks like Boom know that not too much is going to happen around Rose, which is why they want to punish someone in the Dire Triangle. Whereas Fnatic, it looks like they're more so afraid that maybe their bad rider was getting ganked top and that Boom were playing in their jungle. So both teams kind of just swapping sides completely. Now <laughs> Fnatic scanned the Rose, it, it hits, but it was just Mr. Jack Boys running across. So they're not really roaching. So right now. Game definitely slowing down a bit. We have FBZ who's saving a lot of gold. He's gonna get caught. He's on top of a TA trap. Nice toss in onto our Mel. Careful about the curse. Scan is around. He's looking. FBZ. It's a okay curse. Nothing too crazy, but it gives enough time for people to come over. Tim's follow up arrow. Four step comes back out. As Janua is just pumping up the damage with the infantry scan, he's gonna get caught to the side. Tim's is gonna get caught. And he's gone like on end. Yo, this boy is slapping. Oh, no worries. I, I I had to bust out my secret talent play by play. I knew. <laughs> uh, look, Jabs is actually going to get caught oh, here again as well. But... Okay, he They're gets the high five as well. He knew, he knew the whole time Yopas couldn't get him with a torrent go ship combo. And yeah, but that is looking good. PL. How the hell did he do that? I'm not sure. Jabs has been Chads this whole this whole series, honestly. Chads, I like it. Colossus, yeah. Chads, what else we got? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm giving Lacoste one for his money, really. Yopaj, yeah, he has the X mark the spot, but unfortunately, Palos has the little trap there to save him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what is what is Boom to do to make sure they can get back into this game and use the PL effectively? Like, they're 6k behind. But when is this window uh, closed I for them? Boom, it's, it since it's, it's, it's not easy for Boom to uh, force Roshan, or really get into a tier 2 tower. 
And when you have these lineups that want to quote unquote play long fights, you want to play in open areas. Like you want a fight in a jungle. You don't want to fight next to a tower Radiant because then it's kind of hard to chase. Ideally for them, they want to smoke into Fnatic where it isn't too deep, but where they're also connected at the same time so that they can help each other. Like in the fight that they had in mid, very hard. Like the PL never got to connect us mid. We have another goal. Jabs has BKB now, so he's he ignoring really everything. Yeah, goodbye to FBZ. Scam is also being burnt up here. Scam is sticking a bomb, starting to stick to the skin and illuminates. They don't even bother to commit. It's almost like they're poking him to death. Yo, Paj. He just wants to retreat now. Jackie at least gets caught with a solar vine, but we have a double ganger to the spell. My friend, Follows is chasing after him, but Jackie manages to make down the stairs. However, another solar vine with the vessel. No time for him to double. Two more seconds he needed, but they won't even give him that. That's what I'm talking about. Radiance yeah, I think these BKBs are just really hard for them to, to deal with. You, all, you saw FBZ, he's actually been holding on to a lot of gold for a long time. He had like 2k gold, and when he died now he had 3k gold, as we have Jabs yep. getting yep. hot mid without his BKB. No BKB, and that's probably Radiance a death for Jabs. So at least a small recovery yeah, you, for you, you need to punish this man, stop his sadness, show him <laughs> where he's at. Exactly, look, because of his uh, overconfidence, it might be able to interrupt the Roshan. Nope, a little bit too late. And in fact, the guy to get interrupted is the Winter Weapon. Skin could be in trouble. Skin immediately using the Cold Embrace, but they have enough magic damage to bring him down. And there's gonna be no Winter's Curse this fight. As DJ barely surviving, TPing back home. They can't let him have that, right? DJ just goes back. He's the second chair of this team. As Palos, X marks the spot, he can't chase after them. Janwell will do the trick instead. And SCT gets solar bound. Illuminate on top of it. That's gonna kill off FBZ. Jackie going for Janwell, but Janwell's a little bit too tanky. The Enchantress is putting up a good fight and making sure to survive, turning into a pick towards the end. But the Torrent actually avoid it thanks to the pick ball. But finally, that Spirit Lance will finish him off. As Jackie avoids the fight and gets the kill on the support. Very long fight for now, but you, you can still see the amount of range that Fnatic have in their heroes. It, it just allows them to play so nicely without really ever committing. And their BKBs right now are really, I would say, not maybe the saving grace, but it makes the team fighting for them so much easier. As we have a DD up top, might have... They don't have a bottle, do they? No, so they're just gonna hand it to their TA later. They also have the tiny blink finish, so I think the fight's are somewhat straightforward for Fnatic to play. You're just gonna have the bad rider running in as they do see Scam in the trying on a trap. Not sure if they would look to engage here, it's quite deep. Palos is fishing with his little DD rune. Armel. It's torrented, there's the arrow that hits Armel, so Armel. You will be fine for now because Jabs is just taking on the mantle of Initiator. Flame break first into the lasso, maximizing his damage with a solar bind in the middle of the firefight. Your has no BKB, so he's going to die four seconds away from that golden immunity. And the one who has the BKB instead is Palos, who uses it to disengage here. Still has the Aegis, but doesn't want to die, you know, running 1v5. Yeah, it's very hard right now for, I think, Dyer's Boom to get out of this, I don't know, it's called a sticky situation. I think their, their map sticky is... Sticky napalm situation. It, yeah, it's real, like, their map is getting very shut down right now. Like, this inch, I don't know if you saw earlier, but this guy is on a godlike streak right now, so this guy is gonna pump out a lot of damage. You have the Bad Rider and Kozlov who can play very freely. I think if you're Boom right now, you need to try to stabilize this game a little bit. People will receive deaths, that's just gonna be the nature now. I think you need to split up the map a little bit, try to get the side lanes out and try to trade BKB charges from the Fnatic lineup over the next couple minutes. Because the only way that the PL, Kunkka and the Venom can shine later in the game is if those BKB charges drop lower. Because currently right. they're really Don't high. Caudal awesome. hasn't even used his BKB yet, he's still on 9 ben. seconds. He has a Dagon now for more damage too. And I think Boom really need to try to like squeeze in a Lotus Orb through the next couple minutes because fighting head on right now is about impossible. And bottom, Palos. Palos, so there's another, at least a uh, Mel to avoid some of this damage. Where's the help? There's the four staff from General, making sure he gets away. DJ here by two, finds SCT, and Palos don't want to fight this. Nobody can be available, but that's gonna be enough damage to kill off the support, actually. And now Palos realizing maybe this is not the best fight to take. He's just gonna fight to the death. That's his first life. Comes back with a BKB, though. Comes back with a BKB. What can they do with it? We'll have to see. As they finish off FBZ with a simple Illuminate, Winter Scrub up for the kill on Jap, who still has no BKB, go for Skem next, and it's mostly Enchantress doing the damage as Palos is now leading this charge. BKB still not committed here. Trap for Yopaj, but Palos acknowledging it's time to retreat. Now, finally. Hopefully he's Come not forced on, to use his BKB, but Jackie 
He wants the skill, has vision, Diffuse will play first use, but it's Boom now respecting Fnatic. They're too afraid to engage. Yeah, I think it was I was probably high for him to reach with the melt as well, and the TA is still having his BKB at the ready. I think it sure. was yep. just hard for them to kind of squeeze <laughs> through. I think right now I'm just I'm just trying to like if I am in Boom's shoes right now, I'm I'm not sure what your really next goal is here. I think what we touched on earlier with trying to lower these BKB charges and mm -hmm. trying to squeeze out long fights, it could be good, but I I'm really of the I really feel like they need to get a Lotus Ward made in this game because this bad rider, he's just yeah. rampaging through these heroes. He's killing Bro, the right now. As he should, yeah. As he should, yeah, yeah. We did talk yep. about how earlier he was like a, a tankier bad rider, now he's just straight up bad rider. It's perfect for him, honestly. Yeah, I mean, our Mel plus the bad, they've really cracked open this game with the support Radiant's rotations, I think, all being on point. Talos was allowed to. I think recover very well in this game as he did, getting to farm these creeps, recovering, picking up the ages, and now we have a three-man smoke because they see FPZ in mid around these traps. Yeah, and that means that FPZ initiation is uh, discovered, like you said. The smoke is going to avoid him instead, perhaps going for the PL, trying to take a longer route. That smoke is still halfway there, so we have plenty of time for Fnatic to set up wards and everything. Control the triangle then. Double damage. Well, they do have Manta on the PL, so this will at least help his hero to split the lanes pretty well. The problem with okay. Venno and Kunker, they're not very mobile heroes, right? So asking them to run around the map and try to squeeze out the map and push out lanes is... It's, it's, it's very difficult for them to do this. Yeah, we're starting to see that from, uh, from Boom, who is instead gathering mid. Maybe they all hold hands together, the BKBs will go away. Pray the BKB away. What can we do here? Maybe looking for a potential way of baiting Fnatic to dive you. I think it's all like when you're okay. behind trying to bait the enemy team to maybe go a little too deep and zoom, go up the high ground. That, that is a bait, but they're losing a the Winter Wyvern. And at least the Winter's Curse gets used. Dagon finishes up skin. FPZ is now in trouble himself as Armel uses his own BKB. There we go, the power of the Golden Coddle, hoping to finish off FPZ, but FPZ with that Glimmer Keep should be safe for now. The Moonlight Shadow covering him as well. And it's only going to be a 5 for a 4 here. Not the worst trade for Boom, all things considered. Even got a couple BKBs off. Palos to us is all. Yeah, they trade one for one there. So Palos should be alright. Having a little bit of poking. I think here again, you want to spread to the side lanes ASAP if you're Boom. Try and get the map a little bit pushed out. Try to get your PL closer to Scotty. And I think the next time that you're really going to have Boom and Fnatic Clash should be around the second Roche. In, in terms of like a bigger fight. Maybe perhaps what we see over the next one, two minutes are like a few skirmishes here or there. Getting one kill here, two kills there. But the next big objective for both teams will be the second Roche. And I think Boom cannot allowed to give it away for free. They need to already plan for this play right now because the next Roche can respawn in a minute from now or so. So get your buybacks ready, talk about how you want to take the next fight. Maybe we need to abuse, you know, the TL's tankiness and hold that bot. Great. Yeah. Jab is running in like a crazy man. And he takes FPZ. He cooks him to death. Tim's is the next target, but... Him's a little bit too far away. He's had a leap charges, however, so Balos might still be able to initiate onto him. Nope, Thorin's actually baits him. He's have to use the BKB. Our BKB force, which means Boom can now disengage. This could be an attempt at Roche now. If you're, sorry, not attempt at Roche, mind you, but they could defend Roche without the BKB on Balos, maybe? Well, it's actually very close. If that arrow connects on the TA, he, yeah, he's probably just dead there. Um, I think something else we need to think about, at least if you're in Boom's shoes, you, they really have to talk about the execution in terms of how can you actually connect a stun lock on a hero. Because X Torrent into Arrow on a core, it's going to be very hard to pull off because they can just press BKB, right? So <laughs> what I think they need to do is that you may need to have, you need a curse into Arrow into, in, in the fights. It's really the only reliable setup that you have. Fnatic for now, at least, they don't have any four staffs to save the guy. So if yeah, you do Scythe, manage though. to get a curse, in, uh, they do have one on Mr. John Well with Radiant's his pike. But still, if they're facing attack. you, you get the curse into arrow. I think this is one of your win conditions in the following fight to try and execute this. And a hex on Mr. Yopaj. Exactly. So he just bought it because he understands what you said. They need an easy way to yeah. initiate. Hex might just be that cool. And they're protecting the Roche, they know, however, the Roche is the longest Roche timer possible. 
or I'm sorry, one of the longest. Who's close to it? Uh, does this benefit Boom? Do they want this extra time for themselves? Honestly, I think not. Simply because they got close. Because they just picked up the Hex, I think mm. the surprise factor, it would have most likely just benefit them. Because now, actually, Armel, he picked up a Hex of his own. We have Jack Boys finishing up his Scotty. So even though Fnatic are 20k gold ahead, Boom definitely have some signs of life here with the timings that they're hitting. Scotty, the Radiant's Hex, if they're talking about the right things attack. now, maybe they have some buybacks, they can catch Fnatic off guard. There's definitely a way where they get a snappy kill into the Roach and they can have a comeback in this game. Radiant's bottom tower is under yeah. attack. Okay, that's, that's good for Boom, who are not protecting the triangle like their life depends on it. It probably does in this, uh, in this particular game. It really and does. Fnatic. Die. They're trying to pierce the strangle defense. Maybe we go here. No, no, no. A little more left. Okay, okay. Maybe this is the plan. Toddle leading. They decide maybe Jabs is better if he leads. Toddle just goes in. Doesn't care. Trying to kill off the Venno. They still have a chance. MPT. He's stuck there. They got to finish him off. One kill. And with the Albatross, maybe get another one on Scam. Winter's Curse, well set. Resets the fight at least. Scam turns into a pink though because of the Hex. And now they kill him. Collecting his hand. No PKB timing for this poor Batrider. Jabs doesn't have time to use it. And they punish him quickly enough. As the X marks the spot, would it hit Palos? Do you have any follow up? Oh, it just melted. Oh, no, they're fine. They ignored it completely. And now Jackie's in trouble. Jackie's forced to double ganger to the low ground. Double damage no longer here on Palos, though. Another extra damage actually. They hit him with the arrow, too. <laughs> and the torrent, but they don't have any damage beyond this poke. Nice engage actually by Fnatic. These guys are... There's a lot of confidence in some of their plays where they TA with his DD runes. He's just like, alright, let, just let me go in. You know, he gives all the vision to his team. He slaps the Veno, forces a cold embrace. Then you have the Bad Rider come in. And it's just, it's breaking the Boom, like Boom's lineups a lot. Like their positioning just gets really screwed with very fast in this game. The TA blinks in, Bad Rider comes throws out one, two stickies, and suddenly this is not Boom's triangle anymore. It's Fnatic's triangle in the matter of like five seconds. Yeah, they've already set up some aggressive vision as well in the northern side of the triangle. They de-warded the Boom's triangle like you pointed out. So and now does Boom keep on trying to fight and control this triangle or do they spread out like you suggested earlier and try to ghost push all the lanes? PL Manta, the next wave top. After you make both these plays, you gather and you go for a quick surprise smoke. Like being 20k down, I think defending your triangle again Unless you're preparing right now to fight with like 3-4 buybacks, it will not work. So in my opinion, you go for an aggressive play and you, again, you try Hex into Arrow, which is not easy to do because there, remember, there is one four staff. So I think we curse into some Torrent, Bolt, follow up Hex, stuff like this. It's hard to execute, but when you're down this much, you're gonna have to take a risk to at least win this game sometimes, right? If they're gonna sit back, I think they'll win this game 0 out of 10 times. Is under attack. Yeah, and that's exactly what Boom is trying to do with this Moonlight Shadow, hoping to make a play here. They surprise him. On behind Roshan here. However, the creeps have detected them, so this is no longer a surprise play. And Fnatic's like, okay, free triangle, I guess, and maybe free Roche too. Playing around their own ward. As now it's Boom who congregates, FPC will be the leading man. Gaia's middle tower is under attack. The arrow does not hit the rush, at least it's not helping the TA. Hoping for some bashes here on the Palos, maybe. Jackie, giving vision with the illusions. The enchant just keeps everyone at bay. They found the Marana with the lasso. They should be able to finish her off. Tims is down. That's a dieback. No more arrows. That is a dieback. Healing power. That's hard. Oh, oh, he's a hex. Oh, he's a hex immediately. There's a beginning to honor though, but they'll have to use it. There we go. Ghostship misses. Apollos is gonna die here regardless. That winter curse. Luckily, everyone's beacon leader on Apollos, but he's dead no matter what. The rest of the team needs to cover for him as FPZ gets burst by the Illuminate. You'll find TP's in the middle of the fight unsuccessful. And they also catch FPZ as he has no time to TP. Scam gets hexed. His TP is also cancelled. Uh, Jaguel taking the PL solo. Scam will fall here. Fanatic, they have no buyback on follows, they can't really help their team out. So this is gonna be our mail oh, with the PL, and apparently the damage is too high! Jackie, no chance to retaliate! Harry just got handled! Man, this Eng, <laughs> he's dealing way too much damage. It's uh, he's doing so well. I'm surprised that he does end up going down. At some point, Jack was just like, yo, you, I'm, I'm taking you with me, and he sits on the end for like 10 seconds. But uh, this, this Coddle needs to not be underestimated, especially now in the late game. He has 25 talent on the Illuminate. 
This guy is pumping out heals over heals over every few seconds. Yeah. He keeps killing all the illusions. I must say, I'm a little surprised that Boom and that fight didn't opt to spam some buybacks on their Kanka Veno and Winter. The PL was still in somewhat of a fighting shape, and when I saw him double in, it kind of looked like as if he thought his team was going to come and right, like help right. him out, which is. In my opinion, probably a play that they should have gone for. But again, Fnatic played the fight beautifully. It's, well, it's a lot easier for them to do it after up 20k gold. But they're using the heroes well. They're using their spells in a very nice way. Johnwell just keeps pumping out all this damage with his impetus. And I think now Roshan is going to be on the menu. Yep. I think uh, Johnwell took your, your words to heart, right? You said Enchanter is to be there, like tank some of the Radiant's fights, be in the front, forefront. He's doing that. BKB hurt. Yeah, he's but, making but sure. Big... Yeah. Blessings. The the blast break. How much does that help you as well if you're the enchantress here? You think that it helps a man up a lot? Is that uh, one of the actually it, it helps him a lot. Like the bonus armor is something that works really well on the hero. Mm -hmm. You don't really buy a lot of armor items. Medallion is like out of favor for this hero. It's so having more armor is great. Having the disarm against a PO and like dealing damage to illusions, whatever, is also very good. As here we could see again, PO goes down. Some buybacks were available, so again, need to question that a little bit. But I like. You know, boom, they're... I can still see from how they're playing that they're talking about what they want to do in this fight, right? They keep trying to execute a curse into arrow or a clutch hex into torrent versus one core fast and then try to help each other out. Fanatic. And they initiate immediately onto the Winter Wyver. No Winter's going to do this fight. Palos not afraid of death either. Once again, it gets hexed into the torch, into the door chip. Everything for Palos. And it has to finish him off quickly. Opening oh, Ivercraft. Just active. sitting in white. Palos still alive. They force the Winter's curse onto him. Palos with a sliver of HP, but somehow not dying just yet. There's a Splinter Blast to make sure he does go down. Chad is for the TP, but damage is too high. The arrow hits as well, so he's going to go down. Janwell couldn't be the tank, and this time they're going to punish him for all. All the plays he made earlier. Now, bro. He's gonna BKB TP and no way. This enchantress actually unkillable. A fanatic still lost two heroes here. And a boom. Okay, that's let's the upper end of this engagement. Is, uh, actually Roche for a boom unless Fnatic don't want to give this up. Which means they, they will have to double buyback if they want to contest this. I don't think one buyback would be enough. But let's see how much they respect it. It looks like they will respect it enough. At least for now. I, I would like to see if, yeah, they do change their minds. Boom, will Scott a DJ kill with the Shadow Break. Instead of Mel would be a much more valuable target, but immediately the BKB uh, gets fucked. Forced. Yeah, not bad, not bad. They're actually getting back into this. Uh, Boom are making some very... Uh, Yopash right now, what? this oh, Hex, yeah. this guy has some quick fingers, my friend. This TA... Yo, Palos, you better pre-BKB the next time you blink into this map, yes. because this guy is getting insta-hex into instant torrent every fight. And I think you cannot allow this to happen one more time. So right now, Boom, they're, they're kind of owning right now. Insta-hex, kill the TA, mm -hmm. keep the fight going. Now you force a bad rider, buyback. And after that, you get the Caudal to BKB. So it's another 50 seconds. So I like that Boom are, you know, pressing forward on the map. They're the ones, even though they're 20,000 gold down, they're controlling this map at least right now. Yes, and the Hex hit. once again instant. This time it's for DJ though. He has no big KB to save himself, so he's most likely gonna go down here. DJ is having help from the Illuminate, but unfortunately, a tidal wave will make sure he stays in place and kills him off. As uh, Jabs gets caught with the Winter Curse, they could continue this. There's the buyback immediately yeah, from Fnatic. The and the BKB from Palos is quick as well. They knew the Hex is on cooldown regardless, so Palos, a little bit more safe, but the BKB's gonna run out. Dagon for FPZ. Someone kill careful, FPZ. Yeah. Armel got a Hex. So won't hit because the force that saves him, but Tidal Wave brings it back into the fight. Armel, that's that BKB, he's gonna go down. Palos also forced to blink back to safety. DJ comes back in to finish off FPZ. And now it's done well, the target the has from behind. Jab starts to finish off Yopaj, but Yopaj is a bit too tanked with his Koka. So here comes done well, hoping the enchantress can help him out. There's the impetus, and he does get the kill until the enemy mid laner. But Jabs got hit by the last stack of, wind, of Arctic Burn, and with Jackie, they'll be able to finish him off. Done well, however, a bit too tanky. The else commit for the skill, getting Jamal more mana will give more damage. He just can't kill the Enchantress, but follow the arrow the kill they can totally take. Refraction's done. They actually can see him. Janwell, he is not the target anymore. They just go for his carry and finish him off as the Shed Enchantress manages to make it out of here alive, but without a carry to help her out. They don't have what it takes to defend this Roche, and Boom has actually turned this around for now. 
Uh, Boom is back. Their base is uh, <laughs> receiving a little bit of damage from the 8 billion creeps that have been there for like the last 3 minutes. You have uh, even DJ, he's trying to poke down around bottom a bit because they know they cannot contest with Roach right now and Boom are... You know, they're actually on fire, they're turning it up right now. The way that they're playing, moving around and now you, you can... We're starting to see these lower BKBs and getting to pop a BKB, disengaging. It's really starting to hurt them. This PL is mm -hmm. out of range where you're not killing this guy easily anymore. And like, you know, all the damage from the Bad Rider and the Kado, it's starting to taper off a bit, especially against this guy. The Hex are coming in, Clutch, even the Tidal Waves from Yopaj, the arrows on top. You, Fnatic, need to step it up, I think, right now to... Even though they, it looks like they're ahead, but I think this win probability is starting to shift heavily back into Boom's favor. Okay, so what could they they're do? They're still behind in win probability, I'm sure, but... You know, it's... Uh, this it, this is a scary point of the game. You're ahead a lot of the time, you make one mistake, and second Roche is always a very iffy part of the game. Because buybacks messing up one side, they suddenly get an Aegis, they get a shard on a hero, he gets, you know, fed up with some gold. So, uh, yeah, it's starting to get a little bit troublesome for Fnatic now. So what do you think Fnatic can, uh, needs to be wary of in these uh, initiations to make sure they don't give up completely? Like, how, do, how does the ideal team fight go for Fnatic here? So Fnatic right now, they need to make sure that when these fights start, that first of all, they need to be patient with their BKBs. So this means <laughs> yes. that when the fight starts, if you use a BKB or two or even three, you better be killing some heroes. Right, like they need a good jump. Ideally, the bad rider he gets a blink lasso again. I think Winter Wyvern probably one of the best uh, catches that they have. Make sure that you don't bait each other to you know help you in scenarios that you don't want to, because it's starting to be a little weird in terms of how you want to fight. Like now this PL, the game has changed a bit. The PL can now be this roadblock that just runs into you. And you, you need to Radiant's actually ignore these guys. So Fnatic now, they need a proper jump and make sure that their BKB usage is on point. It's actually the most important part because now these long fights, you are not Radiant's running away anymore from this boom lineup. Attack. These Venom wards now with Dyer's the PL chasing you down, you will die without BKB. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. Indeed, with the uh, Plague Ward pool that are being taken out. Oh no, oh, our Mel. Lane. He got hexed by Yopaj, sent back into the tidal wave. He still has the BKB, but I don't think he's gonna have time to use it. The damage is gonna be too high. Jackie gets a free kill here. Oh, that's no buyback either on our mill. Oh, that old man seemed lost there. <laughs> I wonder. So, yeah. ah, man, Yopaj is... Early onset dementia, you know? This, this guy is uh, very impressive. What he's doing right now on this Konka is... On this hex, Insanely man. high tier. This Hex pickup and now the Blink Dagger is working into a refresher. They have this gem now too. And I, this is where networks, they start being a bit weird. Because now like hero matchups and how you play fights, they matter a lot more. Because as I'm saying, right. Fnatic might be ahead in terms of the network. But I would rather be Boom right now. I was, like, I'm not even kidding. Yeah, even in morale as well, right? When you're the team that's clawing back, you feel much stronger. For sure. They also, like, the, the items are starting to come in too. The Marana Raid Pack. FPZ's utility build is starting to come through as well. He has uh, Heaven's Halberd against the TA, Dyer's especially now the lower the BKB just go as they, they fish him out. Oh. oh no, the Hex! Palos! I think he's been more picked than human this whole game. Finally, I think the BKB says, no, I am done with this animal farm thing. But unfortunately, Palos doesn't have too much time. The tidal wave is perfectly calculated, which allows him to punish Palos' early BKB. And he's done for. Attack. Ooh la la. Yeah, we are. Boom is in favor of this game, even though they they are down in network, and it's not gonna look any better. Like these three heroes, you you cannot defend this base. You can maybe delay it, but you need to be careful. Even then, like if Yopaj has an angle, you have a blink hex into tidal wave. And actually, the inch I didn't realize this until now. My my, my friend's got a radiance. Oh my god. Done well. <laughs> this is an interesting build. Is this the best item you could possibly build against the PL? It's, I, that's the, it's the one that you need to respect at least. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I, they, they understand they, they've got a PL problem, right? They were able to deal with it for a long time. Now they maybe misplayed a few team fights. Boom are gonna pick up the melee racks here. More gold coming their way. More map control is gonna come their way too. DJ doing a good job at you know trying to nullify that a little bit. But they know there's a PL problem, and it is starting to be very, very apparent. You cannot deal with them. So Mjolnir Shiva, oh. as they catch with the jabs, gets hexed, X mark. 
This is no way they get jabs too. He has BKB TP. Jabs. He's tasted. He's so trying to oh, just yeah, upfront. Yeah, curse. Blink curse. Yep. <laughs> just run, jabs. He's, he's, run, he's, blink. He's fine. He's fine. He's fine. Okay, attack. this guy is too slippery. Oh, I thought that was a voice line for a second. That was, that was very <laughs> open. <laughs> Maybe in the future. All right, Aegis is expiring. Let's see. What do we do here? Okay. Who are going for a form of smoke? If you are fanatic, what the hell do you do now? Because when this PL runs with you, you better know what you're doing. You better know if you're all in committing and ignoring him and try to somehow go behind him. Which seems very hard because I'm not sure how the TA will deal damage running through the PL. So I feel like you need to do with some blink, lasso, bring a guy in, have the TA slap him and then reset once again. Like a full on 5 on 5 team fight, I actually think it's impossible at this stage anymore for a fanatic to take it. Okay, that seems that seems like a tall order to be able to, to defeat them. What what is the best how do they increase their chances? Is it just a deep pushing the lane as much as possible and hoping for these pickoffs to happen with superior map vision? I think oh, again wait. you need to be creative, perhaps try to go around. They are smoked up right now. And I think they cannot go on the PL unless they clutch him, so they need to go around, which is what they're looking for. Uh, but the uh, it saves him. The moment that will heal back well. Go for Junwell, however, he's the perfect tank as they also hexed up DJ. Junwell, heal him back up. <laughs> They're trying to deal with the enchanters, but he's too strong. So a DJ it is instead, the team fight separates. Just concerned with what they have to do with this enchanters. Everyone in Fnatic just retreats. Not too many BKBs used, just DJs, not that big a deal. Aeon just for the as well. This is an opening. This is an opening, and Jabs goes forward directly. Yeah. Going for Skip, but Skip and set a cap, which saves him from the lasso. And that's why Skip doesn't die just one. yet. DJ might just die as well here. As, yep, he is going to fall to the silence. Yo, tip your patch right now. Someone tip this man. This guy is just insta X mark the lasso to break it. This guy is a wow. fucking monster. Okay, Take to get this man out of this game. <laughs> There's some illegal shit going on. Yep, they, they actually had to. That's why his name is inverted, right? His real name being Japoy, because if the police catch him, it's a big problem. In this yeah, they, 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 they're not allowed to know. Oh, uh, another, one. another hex, man! Someone stop this man! He's the hand collector! He wants Jab, but Jab doesn't be at this this time. However, he gets pushed back to the tidal wave, and that little push might just be enough to double ganger up to the high ground. They have vision of him, Jabs. You're not getting away! Yo, Paj the Butcher. Radiant structures yeah. are um, What is there even to say? They're even going for more. He is, this guy yeah, ain't done yet. He's fishing. No way. Foreign? He can't He's not vision of them. They didn't have It's gonna be alright. They need to start looking at their base a bit. We have some pinks coming out on the tier 4s. Both uh, yep. Gam and Jackie are coming out on the tier 4s. I mean, there's not in too much danger, but you don't really want to give up. As Mr. Follows, he's ready again. The agent. Yeah, the agent <laughs> worked, Matt. Agent Paulus yeah. got him this time. And uh, he can okay, still so be a little return kill. I, I must say, I like how Fnatic were playing the fight in starters. Now, you want to start with a lasso, yeah, but there's A on this, right? The Mirana has an A on this, the Venom has an A on this. So they're like hiding a lot with like the Dagon, try to pop a disc here, try to pop one there. Then Jax found the Winter. I guess it's, he just picked up the A on this now because the cooldown is the lowest, so he didn't have it before. But then the clutch X mark to interrupt this play, and now what we see, Paulos is actually drawing on the bottom minimap. He knows that somebody used Glyph on Boom earlier, like a minute ago. So they know that they have a win condition here. They understand that they cannot win a teamfight anymore. So they know why teamfight them when we do all in our bodies. As we go P. No! P for Pig! Oh. I never thought of that before! Palos! He's screwed! There's nothing he can do! No time for the BKB! They catch him again! Double hex on the refresher, by the way. What a pickup by Yopaj. This guy is... <laughs> good God, dude. Some illegal shit going on. Investigate this man. Okay, wow. luckily for Fnatic, their timing has not closed. The glyph is still on cooldown for 3 minutes and 20 seconds. And I actually think it's not that bad of a play. You either try to go for that, you do some all-in play with right. the thing down his jabs, who's trying to fish for the winter Radiant's bottom, didn't quite catch him. Or you need to start working at new ways to scale your heroes. I think DJ working on an Aghanim would be a good shot in the game to be a little echo. I don't know if they will not do it, he won't start, but I don't know. Jack was here knocking at his 
one boy. Oh no. Not being dangerous this time. He's a true carry at this game, and Janel dies. All hope goes away. And now the split push begins as Fnatic. Nope, they decide to TP back actually. As the only chance. Perhaps someone disturbing here as the Connell. Is we don't push instead our Mel. He's getting recalled. He's recalling someone. It's the TA. Okay, Carlos is hitting the, the tier 4 battle. Carlos avoids it. He got Heaven's Halberd, however. And once again, it's Yopai stuck in 